This time on Mac Break Weekly, I'm Andy Notko, and I've got the entire show to myself. Yes, Frank Burns has taken over the 4077, but it's okay because I've brought in three awesome developers to talk about everything that happened during the keynote at WWDC 2017. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. It's time for MacBreak Weekly, show 562, recorded on June 6th, 2017. Teraflops make me tingly. MacBreak Weekly is brought to you by WordPress. WordPress powers 27% of all websites. Get 15% off your new website at wordpress.com slash macbreak. That's wordpress.com slash macbreak. And by Texture. Access the world's most popular magazines anytime, anywhere using your smartphone or tablet. Try it free for 14 days at texture.com slash twit. And by ZipRecruiter. Are you hiring? With ZipRecruiter.com, you can post to 100-plus job boards, including social networks, all with a single-click screen rate and hire the right candidates fast. Try ZipRecruiter free at ZipRecruiter.com slash twit. Good morning, afternoon, or evening. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, and it's the epic one day after the WWDC keynote, and I have assembled a murderer's row of developers because I've been left all alone, bereft and abandoned, like Colette at the start of that play that I've never actually seen. Uh, yes, Leo is out on vacation. Renee is off at WWDC, up to his armpits or someplace lower in, uh, in top secret uh, briefings, and Alex is just being top secret to begin with because he has such a cool, cool career that way. But once again, I've got three developers to talk about developer stuff. And also, we developers spend money too, so they're they're consumers too. Uh, but welcome back, Kelly Guymont of App Camp for Girls. Kelly, hello again. Hi, it's nice to see you again, Andy. It's been an age. It's been an age. We, we tend to show up on a lot of podcasts together. We, um, I, <laughs> so I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad to see the feedback that happens. I, I should point out that Kelly is very, very happily ensconced with a with a partner. So no, it's not that it's not that we're dating or anything like that. We, I just, <laughs> I, I just, about that I one. just, yeah. There, there's just been enough tweets about that to say no. <laughs> it's, she, we, wow, we were, we, I only we, saw one, we, so I had no idea. Oh, I, so, I, yeah. I, I got a couple. I got a couple more. So I was so saying that the reason why <laughs> Kelly tends to, because uh, Kelly has also been showing up a lot on the Material podcast, uh, chiefly because uh, we lost our third, our third regular, uh, and so we've been sort of inviting our friends uh, from time to time to come on in. And because Kelly is quite awesome in the podcast here, I like having her on podcast. She makes me look very, very good. Uh, so she tends to get invited a lot. So. Uh, <laughs> Well, let, let's see how quickly we can get you sick of me and me sick of you on these things. <laughs> uh, but brand new uh, is Janie Clayton, the author of the Pro the Metal Programming Guide. And oh my God, what a great pick you were for this show! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Really excited to be here. <laughs> <laughs> what I, I keep I keep forgetting. What what time zone are you in? Um, I'm in Central Time Zone, so I'm like okay, Chicago. So Okay, so that's not bad. There's uh, let let's let's see how we do with Oliver. We've got Oliver Breidenbach of uh, of Boink Software, all the way way across the ocean. Hey. Uh, this is the end yeah. of a long day for you, or are you, are you just getting up from a very very long previous day? <laughs> uh, it's it's the end of a long day. Yes, um, <laughs> it's evening, getting dark outside. I rely on artificial lighting here, and yeah. <laughs> That's okay. We, we we will be your nightcap. We will be your glass of warm milk that puts you to bed very very quickly. Hopefully not for the listeners though. Uh, but let's let's <laughs> not let's, while, let's, the, while the podcast is going on. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, if you, if you do want to doze off, make sure you lean into the mic as you start snoring because again, we it's all about viral content. If we can cut this two two hour long show down to two and a half minutes of viral clips, it gets us so many more followers. <laughs> uh, that works for us too. We're, we're here to educate, to inform, to elevate the discussion, and to make people think more about the stuff that they use every day 
but we also like advertiser dollars. So there's always sort of like a middle meiosis sort of thing going on there. Uh, let's let's start off with just the. We're, 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 I got an outline of all the all the really. This this was a pretty good one, I thought, as a as a keynote goes. Lots of not just specifically cool stuff to think about uh, and maybe buy and maybe not be able to afford in a hundred thousand years. <coughs> iMac Pro, uh, but also some <laughs> interesting things showing off what Apple wants to be doing over the next couple of years. But overall, let's just uh, go around and talk about the basic question what did we think about this keynote and are we happy and because kelly you are right next to me in this in this four up display <laughs> i think you're going to go first <laughs> okay um i liked it and more than that i didn't really see the stuff that i didn't see holes in what was said and and talked about that are going to make people upset. I mean, we've already heard about a Mac Pro, so everybody talking about there not being a Mac Pro, like, do you remember anything from the last month? Because <laughs> we already knew that was on on the slate. We just haven't seen it yet. Uh, one thing that was notable to me was the announceware. Uh, not stuff that's shipping next week or next month, but not till the end of the year, even. We did get a look at a couple of things that are way, way down the calendar from now, and I thought that that was pretty notable. But otherwise, I was... I was mostly satisfied. There was a small Apple TV shaped hole in the presentation, but otherwise I thought it was good. Yeah, there were a few holes in that. We'll get to that hopefully at the end of the show. Uh, but Janie, what did you think? Oh my God, like I was flipping out. I was really just excited <laughs> about everything that I saw the first like half of the half of the, the keynote. Like I just, I was oscillating back and forth between like, oh my God, this is blowing my mind. Oh crap, I'm gonna have to go and like write about this in my book. Well, like I've got a couple of weeks to go and figure out what this is about. I just, it's very, Apple, it's Apple very... excels at that screwing. I, I, that's why I stopped writing books like three years ago. It's like, great, this is done, it's perfect. I'm proud of this. Oh, what's this in my inbox? Oh, gosh darn it. <laughs> Well, I thought it was funny because I had I started writing my first book back in 2014, and I was really cocky, and I was watching the the keynote then. I'm like, okay, this stuff looks really cool. Oh, hey, they're introducing metal. That looks really awesome. And then they had, like, the one more thing where they announced <laughs> Swift, and I was like, oh, God, I'm writing my first programming book, and I have to learn this brand new language, and I have de and that just completely, like, blew my mind. And I felt a lot of deja vu in watching a lot of the, the keynote this year. It was like, wow, they're giving me everything that I've wanted for the last like three years and it's all coming here at once and now I have to actually like step up and, and actually get it out <laughs> in, into the world and I wow <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I think that WWDC is famous for two for ruining two people's hopes and, and pleasantness. A people who have to write about stuff and have been working on a project like that for three months, and also hardware and software developers that said, "Wow, I'm really really proud of this watch app that le that lets you have like a sort of a safety light, you know, so that not only is it the screen illuminated, but also key." Oh, okay. Well, that was a good two months of my life. All right. Well, now that it's, now that it comes free with every watch OS, I have four months in which to either destroy Apple and prevent them from releasing this or make money off of my one app. Oh, well. Uh, Oliver, how about you? Yeah, luckily we didn't fall into the later category this time. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, I, 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 thought, I thought that uh, it was certainly the uh, most interesting keynote in recent years. Um, I, th I think uh, uh, Apple got a wake-up call last fall when uh, Microsoft came up with the studio um, with the surface studio thing um, and 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 they um, tried really hard to uh, bring back that you know um, we are making cool stuff um, feeling and and I think they succeeded uh, quite well so uh, yeah I, I liked it I liked it yeah yeah, I, I thought it was a strong keynote. Um, but I think you're you're right. And I, one of the things I was thinking as it was going on was that I really felt the pressure that maybe Apple was feeling as they're assembling all this stuff they're going to talk about. Because, like you said, uh, Microsoft has they're, they're they're not the top of the tree in terms of innovation, but they've come out in the past year with a couple of really cool, flashy sort of things that just as 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 the sort of thing that you walk past a, a store window in a mall would make you detour into the store to see what that notebook that's covered with felt is all about uh, and the Surface Studio. Meanwhile, Google had their IO keynote a couple of weeks ago where they're saying, 
We've got we've we've got an artificial intelligence that's going to solve all kinds of problems. You see that fence between you and the and your kid in that photo? Boop, the fence is gone. Hey, you know how you don't you're we're walking underneath a, a sign and you don't know what band that is? Boop, it'll explain what what that's what who's in that sign and when they're playing. And so it's I don't think that the the keynote was necessarily a reaction to that, but I think that this maybe last week they decided to find every place they could put the phrase machine learning into a slide or into part of the talk. Um, they're halfway through the, my my live tweets. I was saying, look, if you're playing the machine learning drinking game where you take a drink every time you hear that phrase, get down off that flagpole, put your clothes back on before somebody arrests you because it was kind of, yeah, kind and, of that and, bad. And some, and, and some of the demos in the R A uh, A R uh, space, they seemed like uh, they were copies of the F8 keynote um, in Facebook. <laughs> so yeah, the, and, and Facebook too. Uh, we'll get to we'll get to A R a little bit later, uh, though. Uh, I did want to make sure because we uh, we were uh, blessed to have three different developers here. Uh, how there there are things that I really can't really evaluate, like improvements to the App Store and improvements to the developer Apple relationship. Uh, they made a big they made a big section about uh, how they're improving the App Store with they're making a, a app reviews happen a lot faster. They're making more making it more conversational. Uh, they're improving the App Store app on iOS so that it makes it easier if you're not making a game to somehow get people's attention uh, and better product pages. Uh, Oliver, did, did you see anything that would make Boink Software happier and better and easier to get their job done with all these changes? Um, so in, in the last couple of years, maybe like uh, two or so, uh, Apple has uh, constantly improved um, the experience of putting stuff on the app stores. Uh, so faster review times, now the ability to be able to uh, respond to uh, customer um, uh, ratings, and that kind of stuff, uh, and it, it keeps coming. The good stuff keeps coming. So, uh, and I think the App Store redesign was long overdue, um, and it looks nice. Uh, uh, it, it, I, I remain, you know, I remain uh, on the sidelines a little bit of if it's uh, going to help developers in the end. Uh, it's certainly um, a good thing for customers. Um, and um, and that's that's the important thing. First of all, uh, the customer comes first, of course. Um, uh, and and it it follows that it should be good for developers too. But um, you know, it remains to be seen how easy it is to uh, get new apps in there, get visibility for existing apps and stuff like that. Um, Apple seems to have chosen to do a lot more manual work with uh, actual people uh, curating uh, content for the App Store, which is a good thing. But also, um, you know, you're as a developer, you're uh, more at Apple's mercy than ever uh, <laughs> uh, regarding uh, being featured. And so uh, it's it looks nice. It's it's it's, you know, change is always a two edged sword. Um, um, but um, uh, I'm I'm hopeful that it's actually improving uh, our lives. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it, I don't well, actually to be honest, I don't think I've ever heard of Apple and developers having a good relationship. Like if you talk to developers, there's always something that is always falling far far short. Kelly, you're you're in an interesting position because you are not just a developer; you're also a developer who helps like brand new programmers under the age of 16 get their first apps yeah. out there and in the app store. What, how do you coach them to say that now everything's been fun and wonderful and creative? You've been at the, the center of your your creative universe right now. Now let me introduce you to the App Store process. Is well, <laughs> where, 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 where does Apple still need to fix things? Well, first of all, I really liked the stuff that we saw in the store. And um, that was actually, for me, um, the only part of the keynote yesterday that cost me money. And that's because they showed off Monument Valley 2 and I freaked out and stopped listening for a couple minutes because I went and bought Mon Monument Valley 2 and then I came back. Um, <laughs> but I don't need a new computer and I don't need a new speaker and I don't need, um, I kind of want a new iPad, but I don't need a new iPad. So for me, like the only part that was actually expensive was the Monument Valley 2 stuff. Um, <laughs> but when what we do is we don't really talk a whole lot about the app store itself 
uh, as part of AppCamp, when we are talking about AppCamp and we talk about how to distribute your apps, what we talk about is sort of in broad strokes because what we want to do is get our developers excited about programming and about uh, what what parts of programming are the parts that maybe make you happy. Not everybody understands mm -hmm. that breaking stuff is a really important part of programming, particularly if you're new to it, if, if you haven't spent a lot of time or you right. don't know a lot of developers. And a lot of and, high school girls don't know a ton of iOS developers, so they don't know that like there's this whole job that's like the art of breaking stuff the way regular people would break stuff and being able to file those reports so that what you release turns out to be something really good for users. So what we do is we take all of the app, all of the apps that are built at all of the camps throughout the summer and we put them together and we throw ourselves on that iTunes Connect hand grenade for them. <laughs> That's that's very oh goodness gracious that I'm amazed you're still alive. But <laughs> well, I don't do the heavy but, lifting on that. I do some yeah. of the hooking things up to p lists and some some really sort of fine detail work. So I'm not the person who actually has to push the button. But finding right. out that reviews are going faster and um, some of the other stuff, it sort of felt like paid search results were a step away from having a good relationship from developers and some of the stuff that they talked about yesterday feels like they're extending some of that olive branch again. Mm. Jenny, have you, a lot of, have you had a lot of experience dealing with the app store? Like any frustrations or any problems that you think that need, still need to be solved? It seems like everybody seems to have the same. It all comes down to like one huge problem they once had that turned off the taps of their access to their own app. Uh, and I don't know how well Apple's doing and making sure that sort of stuff doesn't happen anymore. There we go. Oh, wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, You're good. so I started programming back in about 2012. So I was I got in right towards the end of the gold rush. So like everybody expected you to have an app out on the store, but I started programming relatively later in life. I started when I was like 31. And so I've been programming for the last four years and I feel like every single time I want to try to create an app, it's always just one step beyond my current capability because it used to be before you could just make anything. You can make a flashlight app, you can make a fart app and you can put it out there <laughs> on the store, you know, six years ago and that was totally fine. But now they've been cracking down and they want things that are really polished. There's a lot of expectation that an app is supposed to have a lot of different features and there's a lot of different stuff. And I, I work on this stuff by myself. And so the amount of work that I can do by myself along with everything else that I'm doing is not enough for me to be able to get anything done before, you know, WWE DC comes and blows everything up and so like I find it very frustrating because like I want to put something out on the store but they keep they keep moving the line further than where I'm able to do it at the moment <laughs> it's very frustrating <laughs> I mean, I, get, I, I appreciate that the um, App Store has gotten to be mature enough that they have actual real applications and standards and they want things that were worked on by a team of five people over a course of like nine months and are tested and polished and look really awesome because they want to have a nice store. But it's also really frustrating because you talk to employers and they're like, well, you don't have an app out on the store. And even though you wrote like all of these books, we don't know that you can actually code. It's like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there, there's there's a lot of R E S P E C T that needs to happen. I think oftentimes between Apple and developers, uh, there's gonna, there's going to be a little bit a little bit of bad news for people who have had old apps and haven't really updated them. Uh, we'll talk about uh, iOS 11 uh, later on, uh, but it's relevant to say that there might be a little bit of a cleanup to the App Store because uh, in iOS 11 is not going to be 32-bit app compatible. So any older apps that haven't been updated, obviously we're talking about old apps that haven't been updated in a while, uh, won't be able to work on this new version of the operating system. And you might think that, okay, so what, the, the aforementioned fart flashlight app that has that someone did as a programming project when they were taking their first class in 2008 no longer works. But that might also mean a really important a companion app for a piece of hardware that works just fine and the person who uses it still wants to use it or a piece of a piece of custom hardware uh, that works off of an iOS device like in a hospital or in a machine shop that once again a contractor wrote this for them three or four years ago and now they're going to have to hire somebody to build a 64-bit version of that app that might be a bit of a bummer we're going to have to see exactly how that works uh, but uh, let's move on to uh, of course app, the most famous thing from the keynote of course is the home pod they apple ended with it i thought that we'd start with it because i don't think anybody wants uh, wants the keynote to end with the most exciting and interesting thing uh, so the home pod is uh, what the Coneheads used to refer to as their house, uh, but it's also their intelligent, smart, <laughs> awesome speaker 
Uh, we were all anticipating something like a Siri speaker, like uh, Google Home or like uh, the Amazon Echo. Uh, but this, what they gave us is they're really, really hammering home the point that this is a this is redefining home audio. This is a totally new home audio component. Oh my God, the home audio! Uh, so it has a, a custom, really huge uh, custom woofer that has been designed by Apple. It's got seven tweeters all around it, and the uh, and also an A8 processor, which is the same CPU that's in the uh, Apple TV uh, and older phones. So there's a lot, a lot of processing power in it, and it's not being used necessarily for Siri, uh, according to the demo that they gave. The big upshot of this is that it will, I assume, using the tweeters as a form of sonar uh, with all the array of microphones to figure out where the speaker is in the room, figure out, okay, I'm, I'm actually at the back of a room next to a wall and there are two walls equidistant from my left and my right. Great. So I'm going to shape the sound so that it doesn't matter that I've been placed in a not some, somewhat awkward location. Uh, and uh, uh, there was also a long bit where they're trying to explain that not only that, but the uh, CPU is actually also going to kind of, it sounded as though it was going to tear apart the audio that you're playing and sort of remix it. It will find out, okay, here's the vocalist. We will put the vocalist here. And because there's, it's a big ceiling, we're going to have to really boost the vocal track here. Here are the drums. Here's some really deep bass. We're going to have to mute that, but also increase this, the dimension of it. The idea being that you're spending $350 or roughly three times the cost of a, of a Google Home, but you're getting a really, really, really super awesome speaker. And I wasn't thrilled about the price of it myself because once again, and uh, the what I, what I love about the my smart speakers is that it's not so I don't really buy it to have a really awesome home audio experience. I buy it so that I'm in my bedroom and I can turn my lights off without getting out, out of bed. And then when I go downstairs to the kitchen, I can listen to music while I'm washing the dishes and set a timer for something. I would much rather have the three Google Homes or the three Amazon Echo or the two Amazon Echoes than the one really immense, really wonderful speaker, no matter how great it sounds. Um, Why don't you just buy a clapper? <laughs> <laughs> I could I could borrow one from my from my aunt. She probably still has one. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the 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 other the other stuff to know is that uh, it's. Uh, it was not compatible with Bluetooth. It is compatible with AirPlay too, so it will technically work with any streaming service that you can stream off of uh, your AirPlay compatible device. But it will only directly access uh, Apple Music without some sort of intermediary, which is, uh, I suppose, is ne is is necessary. But I would love, I would have loved to at least had Bluetooth as an option. I guess I'm not even going to have like a headphone jack. I can <laughs> I can plug my tape player into. Um, so so Kelly, That's tell me thing why now, you know. Andy is is yeah. they don't put in oh, headphone <laughs> headphone jacks anymore. That's not a thing now. Silly, silly me. I should I should be happy that the, there are even you, speakers Janie. in this thing. <laughs> yes. Well, I thought the speaker it, was really interesting, but what I wanted from Apple, and I don't know if I'm alone in this, but what I wanted from Apple was a Siri speaker, the way I can have an Amazon speaker or a Google speaker, which is to say, the point of it is not that it's a speaker. Like, I don't feel like Apple's going up against the Echo unit or the Google Home unit with this with this device. I feel like they're going up against stuff like Sonos. And uh, I think there's a Bose system that works kind of the same way. But I think right. they're going up against those sorts of things. I don't think they're going up there. It doesn't seem like they're gunning for the assistant because it's like they built this amazing yeah. speaker that happens to have Siri. It was like Siri was almost the afterthought when they, 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 they did, when they talked they about it. They were like... Look at all this amazing stuff, and Siri they will did, answer you. Did, but look at all this sorry. stuff it did does. They, uh, did they um, did they announce anything uh, about HomeKit being available with or working with this uh, speaker? Yeah, they did. They did announce some uh, some updates to HomeKit, like uh, including wireless speakers into uh, into uh, AirPlay Two is part of HomeKit. Part of AirPlay Two is support for wireless speakers. So perhaps you could have. They they, have, they didn't mention anything about the Sonos compatibility, but there's still a lot that can happen <laughs> between now and September. Uh, but so in. Theory, perhaps you could have Siri working across because HomeKit is all uh, tied up into the same uh, into the same so, Rice Krispie so, Street. So maybe maybe uh, one of the things that is hidden inside the speaker is like the being the hub for uh, the Home uh, Kit stuff, uh, uh, talking, being able to talk to uh, HomeKit devices. Um, I, I think uh, the a the, the built-in processor is maybe an indication of that. Um, <laughs> So that it's yeah. like a mesh network of uh, you can put uh, a speaker in every room and then 
the speaker will talk to the HomeKit um, devices you, that you have. I don't, I don't know if they, if, if it works that way, but I would, I would uh, assume that that is sort of like the idea. Um, yeah, my problem with it was I have awesome speakers. I already have awesome speakers. Mm -hmm. There's these well, two guys, Bowers and Wilkins, and they make fantastic speakers. And I have a bunch of them in my house. And we spent a lot of time and a lot of research and we set them up and they're amazing. And I have a receiver on the two levels where I have serious speakers. I have a receiver that does airplay. And so I airplay to those speakers when I want to hear stuff out of those speakers. So having the... I, I see that Janie really, really agrees with you. Just woo, woo. <laughs> Having the awesome speakers wasn't wasn't the part of that I wanted. Like, because yeah. we had this conversation in my house like a year ago now. Hey, Best Buy has the Amazon unit on sale, the Echo unit. And then uh, Mr. Kelly said, okay, so when is Apple going to come out with one of these? And I said, I don't know if they're ever going to. And the rumors that we're hearing don't really say anything that would lead me to believe that. And then he said... Okay, I guess we'll get one and see if uh, we like it because they still have like a 30-day return policy at Best Buy. So he brought it home and it's still here. And I have no interest in the new one. He has no interest in the new one because we already have great sound systems set up wherever we wanted a great sound system. Yeah. So for Jenny, people who are maybe sorry, getting into this, there may be a market for it, but I don't see it. So part of me that the, the bothered me about watching the keynote was you, you saw all of this amazing stuff where he's talking about like AR and uh, up to, updates to metal and talking about all this futuristic awesome stuff. And then at the end, he's like, we've saved our most important announcement and we're talking about Apple Music. And it was just like, oh, God, Tim, quit trying to make Apple Music happen. It's not fetch. It's not going to happen. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm so sick of every single keynote every year ending, you know, like after we see all of this amazing, wow. awesome stuff, it's like, OK, we're going to end on our most important announcement and it's Apple Music. It's just like, uh, at, 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 at least it wasn't carpool karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that I'm was a, at I'm least entertaining and lightweight. I'll give it that. I'm a, I'm a very big fan of that show. I will not. I will not. I will not stand by while bad stuff is said about that show. Uh, it's 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 it's, it's, no, no, it's no, a weird no, one. No, no, that's that's not. That's not. That's not a. Listen, I, I'm, 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 I'm Oliver. <laughs> you listen to the Adele car, and if your eyes are dry at the end of that, I know you're a robot. You got a heart. You got a lump of steel where your heart should be. That's what I'm talking about. It's Adele and carpool karaoke. I want that playing 24 hours a day inside my coffin after I die. Maybe even before I die, I'll get in the coffin if it, the coffin includes Adele singing carpool karaoke. Um, but it's 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 an interesting. The the thing that the last thing that reminded me though is that. I am now currently I'm currently in the process of trying to upgrade the audio in my just in my office because I want I've been listening to a lot of opera and there is now what I call the Dana Damrau test. And Dana Damrau is like my a, a really really cool, amazing soprano and I will think that a set of speakers is oh my god these are great these are, these are totally worth the $300 I spent for them. Now let's let's play the mad scene from Lucia de Lammermoor and you can hear you can hear the speaker saying I'd like to go back to Best Buy now, please. Can you, can you, can you, can you or, or, or play some more Rush? Play some Rush is easy. Just don't don't play that that Dan and Dabra again because it makes me feel inadequate. So that's that's the difficulty of selling this three hundred fifty dollars speaker. Where I'm sure that by the time they ship it, they're going to make a big bigger point about here is all the things we've added to Siri in order to make this more useful as an active speaker. Uh, right now, they're just saying you're spending three hundred fifty dollars on the, one of the most incredible developments in home audio technology. I, since the invention of quadraphonic sound and find, it goes back to the store the first time it plays something that doesn't work i find it interesting that apple yeah, is trying to kind of put no, no, themselves that, Janie. forward i can knock yeah sorry yeah. jenny <laughs> well i just i think it's interesting that apple is kind of putting themselves forward right now as you know like the the, the pioneer of really high quality sound because i was an actually an audio engineering student back when the ipod originally came out and you know they were talking about how you could have a thousand mp3s that were really crappy and and you know lostly lossy and horrible that you could listen to on your your cruddy little like you know earbuds and like this was a huge innovation was yeah the sound was crappy but you could have a lot of it and so i find it kind of ironic <laughs> that, that apple is now like here we're going to sell the $300 headphones and the $350 speaker. We are now the you know the the leaders of, of you know high quality audio for the home after you know they kind of destroyed it back in 2005. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oliver, do you have some something to say we before we go to commercial? 
I just nope. just for the home part I just uh, looked yeah. at the uh, at the the website at the Apple website and it 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 has a, a section right at the end about Siri and uh being this great assistant uh, in the home and being able to turn off the lights and stuff like that so HomeKit is definitely part of the story here and uh, maybe they focus on the sound because it's easier to sell yeah, so that's the one thing they could definitely show off. Now, I'm I'm really not supposed to show people this, but I actually have uh, a HomePod uh, that's on loan, uh, but it's, it is actually just the bottom from my uh, my Google Home. So I, that's, 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 that's 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 just a big old lie on my part. I'm sorry. I just I want to feel like a big shot. Renee uh, wrote about. News. <laughs> Renee want, Renee wrote about the HomePod from his. Uh, he got to of course hear it at the, at the demo demo area, and he, but I actually had to backtrack and count. So he's saying in this he's buying at least four for his home. <laughs> that's like okay, that's oh, that's no. that, and that is and that is the immediate reaction of someone who's actually heard it. And and if if they if they came with different bands, I would say that no, it's because of different watch bands. But no, <laughs> he must have been very very impressed. I was gonna say this is gonna put a this may possibly put a dent in his watch band purchasing. So wow, that's <laughs> that's a serious uh, statement for him to a, make. As a fan of his, of his Instagram, I'm looking forward to him having to like carry now both of his two color different uh, <laughs> different home pods along with every single iPad and every single iPhone and every single watch he has so he can do those really great photos of every single copy of something in matching colors on a concrete <laughs> cinder block next to it next to a stream uh, but we, we we can talk to to uh, we can talk to him about that next week uh, until then let's uh, let's hear from leo who has some honest honest words from a from a reliable advertiser to share with us hi how, hello everybody uh, sorry to interrupt hope you're having a great mac break weekly i i think as we're speaking i am in lima peru i but i've come back from vacation, because I can't stand not telling you about WordPress.com. In fact, I'm really glad I got, I, I spent, before I left, I spent some time working on my WordPress site, leolaporte.com, getting it all ready, because I, one of the great things about having a site of your own on the net is putting pictures up there and knowing, you know, th they're going to be there. WordPress makes it really easy to create a website for your personal life, for your blog, for your business, for a special event, a wedding, a baby. Uh, you know, what a great idea. Your friends are going to have a baby set up a WordPress site for them. They have so many templates, hundreds of templates to choose from, a variety of plans depending on what you need. I love WordPress.com. And, you know, I've been a WordPress user for 10 years. I, I started my WordPress blog in the early, uh, well, I, I guess the uh, two, early 2000s. So uh, I've been doing it a long time. And uh, it's it, I have to say, it gets better and better, but one of the reasons I like WordPress.com even more than hosting my own WordPress blog, which I did for a long time, is they keep it up to date. They keep it maintained. They've got great, what do they call them, happiness engineers, that if you have a problem, you can you can contact them by chat or email, you can, and, they, and they'll help you, and they, they're fast any time of the day or night. It's really kind of amazing. Uh, what else do I love? Oh, HTTPS, built right in, so your site is secure. Uh, there's an AMP plugin, so on my site has AMP, which means you know that's Google's uh, uh, a system for rapid loading pages on mobile, automatic with my site. I can go on and on and on. Images, I pull in all of my social media from Instagram and Twitter and everywhere. I just love it. Go to leolaporte.com. You'll see what I've done with the place. And, of course, I'm still working on it. That's the other thing that's great about WordPress is you can always tweak it. The other thing I, I love about WordPress.com is the community that's around it. So I, I was blown away. I have half a million followers, you know, on my WordPress site. Uh, so when I post something, that's how many people hear about it, see about it. it the likes, the comments, it's just fantastic. I want you to go to WordPress.com and check it out. You'll find out pretty quickly why WordPress runs more websites than any other platform in the world. 27% of all websites run on WordPress. And WordPress.com makes it easy. Check it out. If you get 15% off any new plan purchase when you go to wordpress.com slash MacBreak. That's wordpress.com slash MacBreak. Create your new website. Find the membership plan that's right for you. Join the community. Join the fun of having a great website. And I'm really, I am a firm believer everybody, every business, every individual should have their own website. Even teenagers, somewhere to put your stuff, up, your home on the web. WordPress makes it easy. Wordpress.com slash MacBreak for 15% off. 
your new website. We thank them for their support of Mac Break Weekly. Now back to the show. Thanks, Leo. Try not to buy too many CDs of pan flute music while you are there. Uh, boy, if there if there was it, it, when you look back at yesterday's keynote, one of the threads that went through pretty much everything was graphics, 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 uh, and probably the most uh, newsworthy part of that was their push into augmented reality. And I was really impressed with their choice of how to pursue it. Whereas Google is saying, hey, we've got this phone called Project Tango and it's got special extra sensors and cameras so that it can map a room and see where you're going. And Microsoft is saying, we've got this great thing called the HoloLens that you can wear this not even like Jordy LaForge beta thing on your head. And as you look around the room, it will place things in front of you. Uh, and Apple, this is the this is like the least Apple-ish thing I could imagine them doing. They, they seem to be saying, we don't want you to have to buy anything. <laughs> Go use your iPhone, <laughs> use your iPad, and do augment. And we're going to let developers give developers all the tools they need to do awesome virtual re uh, augmented reality. And we're we're happy to let them find the awesome in uh, in, uh, in augmented reality. They have a new system called uh, AR Kit, uh, and it's really across the board. Everything that involves graphics has been revamped up. Uh, they have Metal Two now. Uh, the the uh, graphics coded right to the metal, I think the advertising tag phrase was. And Janie, what is really important about Metal 2? Have you been had a chance to dig into the developer docs on it? I don't think they've updated the developer docs yet. I went on to the documentation and like they have betas for all of the like AR kit and ML kit. But when I go to the metal stuff, it's still uh, copyrighted back to 2016. And so like um, sometime after we get done talking here, they're going to have the, the metal to um, presentation, but I haven't had a chance to look through it yet. But like for me, so um, I when I saw Metal originally announced back in 2014, I was like, yes, this is the thing that I'm going to do. This is going to be the thing I'm going to you know make my mark on. Everything's going to be awesome. And then like life got in the way, and I wound up doing a bunch of stuff with Swift. And I kind of thought that I'd missed the boat on being able to put my mark on Metal. So back in October, when Pearson came to me and talked to me about wanting to do this Metal book, I was really excited about it because nobody had done a book on Metal yet. I mean, Warren Moore did, but then he went to work for Apple, and that so that doesn't count. But, <laughs> but like I just I, I had some worries going into WWDC that like metal you know was going to be it was an older technology I didn't think anybody was going to be really excited about it I knew that Apple had been kind of trying to push it for a couple of years but I figured that it was just going to be something that was going to be kind of um, you know like behind the scenes that nobody was ever actually going to go in and like program to the metal and that it was more of a like you know something that people at Unity or Unreal or people at Apple would do but not what normal people would do so when I saw that they had like most of the keynote dedicated to graphics and that they had updated Metal to Metal 2 and that they had all of this stuff about machine learning and all of these things that went back to the GPU and went back to Metal. I was so happy and relieved mm -hmm. that they were really making an investment in this technology and that I wasn't going to you know, put out this book in a couple of months. And people are just going to be like, OK, <laughs> whatever, we're just going to buy it so we can put it on our, our shelf and make to make it look cool. Like this is an ongoing, evolving technology that they are invested in, and it really makes me excited about being an Apple developer. Yeah, it seems like they got two really interesting parts of uh, the new version of Metal. One of which is Metal for VR, so they can you can introduce a, a VR pipeline to that. And also, and th uh, this wasn't this was nearly the the first gasp in the entire keynote. Uh, support for external GPUs. So uh, during the demo in the demo area, for instance, they had uh, a, a they had a, like a, I think it was a, was it a Verve or a, was it an HTC? Yeah, I think it was an, yeah, I'll, I'll just scroll down my notes. But they had ones uh, connected to like an external GPU with the frame f frame rates that were insane and an immersive experience that was pretty, pretty darn hot. Uh, ex lack of support for external GPUs has been one of the big complaints about pro users who really need to be able to do real time processing on on all kinds of levels. Uh, is it is is that is that a problem that has now been solved, Janine? Janie? Um, I would think so. Like being able to connect like an external GPU, um, but for me, like. I know that you asked me about the, the external GPUs and stuff, but like I was a lot more, but earlier you talked about AR and I'm actually a lot more excited about augmented reality than I am about virtual reality because I okay, think that well, like, <laughs> yeah. can I talk about that? Of course. Okay, so um, I was, was, was going to say I was going to say the next in the next bit, but as long as we talked about how again, I thought the GPUs was pretty interesting as to what they could mean for particularly the Mac in the future. Uh, but oh, yeah, the oh. the AR kit looks pretty darn hot. 
Well, I was just going to say, one of the things that worries me about the external GPU stuff is, like, I have a, um, one of the, the Retina 5K iMacs that came out a couple of years ago, and the driver for the, for I, it has a weird GPU in it because I really maxed out the computer, and my updating to Sierra, like, completely broke the GPU and the ability for it to be able to play video. Like I had it yesterday during the State of the Union where my computer had like narcolepsy where every two minutes it would just like fall asleep because it couldn't handle like playing your video from WWDC. And so for me, like one of the worries that I have about the external GPU stuff is worrying that there's going to be driver support for it over at Apple because like it's easier to do that with the um, like the iPhone and stuff like that because you know every single GPU that's going to be in there because it's all integrated with Apple stuff. But when you start bringing in external ones that people are buying from NVIDIA and from other different companies, you have a lot of support that you need to have for all of these various GPUs. And I find that a little concerning. Well, it's 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 a the, the, I think the interesting thing about AR right now is that nobody really knows what it is or they, they know that it's Pokemon Go and they know they can make a lot of money off of something that's a clone <laughs> of Pokemon Go. Uh, but I hope that AR kit is used for a lot more than just doing uh, during the first wave is I'm sure going to be uh, clones of uh, Pokemon Go when OS 11 comes out, iOS 11 comes out. But the, the list of things that it can do for you for a developer just out of the box, it has uh, so it can detect a surface or a plane. And so basically it'll figure out for you that here is a place where something can be put. Uh, it can figure out the lighting of that scene so that uh, as the lighting changes, it can communicate how to change the lighting on the scene that you're placing on this thing. It can figure out what the scale should be so that if you put a, va a vase on the table, it's not like a walk-in vase. It's a it's a, <laughs> probably about the right size for for a vase, or more or more like if you do if if you're doing like a, a 3D version of the Cones of Dunshire game, it will fit the table uh, pretty much exactly. Uh, and it even goes into the camera app of uh, excuse me the camera APIs uh, for iOS 11, where uh, if you've got a, if the user is using a camera with a, with two cameras on it, now the depth information can be provided directly to the developer. And like uh, Kelly, what, what was there? Yeah. Does that does that inspire you in any way? Is that like I I would never want I would never want to build this myself, but now that I can just plug the leg stick Legos together, <laughs> both virtually and in code form, like does it give you any ideas? Part of it for me was it kind of gave some upgradability. Like one of the things a lot of people talk about that I talk to uh, people who really do max out their hardware. I freely admit I'm not one of those people, but people who do uh, run their hardware really hard, they do a ton of video work or they do a ton of audio processing and things like that. For those folks, the GPU stuff is going to be huge because it could potentially mean that in two or three years when your graphics start graphics card starts to feel a little creaky that you can get this new little box and stick next to it and then maybe you can get another year out of it and it's a better investment than having to try to buy a whole new machine at that point or whatever. Uh, so for me, it sort of felt like one of the upgrade concerns that a lot of people have had or one of the complaints a lot of people have had about Apple hardware, which is the graphics card, is they're taking steps to resolve. And it's one of those things that I feel like uh, much like last year we got the non-Apple display that was 5K that you could hook to your computer uh, that Apple mm -hmm. didn't make. Um, <laughs> I feel like this is, again, Apple sort of copping to the fact that, like, we know graphics cards aren't our jam. And so we're going to give you the opportunity for it to be something else. Mm. Uh, Oliver, your uh, Boinks is especially involved in video and photo processing. Is there what 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 get excited you about metal and about all these new opportunities with graphics? Uh, of course, the machine learning stuff, uh, vision, uh, the machine vision uh, things, also uh, augmented reality because uh, we uh, dabble in uh, video creation tools, and I think it's a, it's a, it's an it's it's an amazing. Uh, uh, thing going forward to be able to give kids in schools a video app that they can use um, to create videos that uh, adds augmented reality stuff. So you can uh, put in virtual um, uh, studios um, and 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 you don't have to build like uh, expensive sets. Uh, you can just um, you can just uh, Download them from the web and and just um, and put them into the app and and be a director and, and tell a story and and don't have to worry about the you know complex uh, process of building a, a a villain's castle or 
you mm-hmm. know, a spaceship and, and and explosions and stuff like that, and that can all happen in in uh, augmented reality and 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 be added to your scene. Uh, I think I think that's huge. Um, I also wasn't a, a big fan of VR uh, until I uh, saw uh, the HD, AT, HTC Vive and um, got to play with the Google's, um, Google Google um, uh, Drawing app in in it. And uh, so I'm, I'm lo- really looking forward to being able to to connect the the Vive to my Mac and and play with with that. Creative app. I, I, that is an amazing uh, experience. Being able to draw in 3D space and walk around in your drawing, and that 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 really uh, got me hooked on on VR stuff. I'm not so much a gamer, uh, which is the other big thing about VR. Uh, but uh, creation, if, if if you can be creative, um, that's that's kind of my my thing. So um, I, I, you know. The, the graphics, uh, Apple focusing so much on the graphics performance is sort of like the their realization that they they are not playing on the same um, level yet, and that has to change if they want to be in the R, AR and VR game. Yeah, yeah. I, I hope this expands beyond gaming as well. That's that's obviously the the, the demo of uh, AR kit was uh, Lego Batman. Uh, and there's also there was also some demos uh, with some uh, uh, Lucas Art, not Lucas Arts, but uh, so, some some other gaming stuff. Uh, but it, it, it's good to point out that they're also switching Apple, uh, the entire Mac window manager, I think, uh, over to Metal Two for better performance stuff like that. Uh, when they're talking about uh, machine learning. That was another again the machine learning drinking game. Every single thing is like, and when you <laughs> dial the number, it lights up the numbers. We highlight the number of six using machine learning to know how much we should light it up to, to signify it's okay. That's great. Uh, it really it's it's uh, so it's a uh, uh, they call it powerful machine learning made easy. Uh, Google also at Google I/O was talking about how they really want to take give hey, give the machinery me? of machine yeah. Uh, before we move on to machine learning, is it okay if I make my point that I wanted to about AR? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, I, I, I wanted to make a similar point to what um, Oliver was talking about. Like I've noticed um, in the years that I've spent as an iOS developer that the most successful applications for the phone are ones that interact with something outside of the phone and within the outside world. Like I use, I primarily use my phone for like Twitter and for maps and to check the weather and to do and to do these these short kind of ephemeral like interactions. But they're always something that exists outside of the phone. So like I was thinking before the the keynote yesterday that the kind of the future of Apple was going to be more of along the lines of, you know, like the home kit, Bluetooth, LE stuff that would interact with the phone. But I think that um, AR has a lot of potential to it because I think that like there's a certain subset of people that kind of, you know, wanted to, you know, get the, the letter from Hogwarts telling them that they'd been accepted to <laughs> be a wizard and want, you know, the, the doctor to come and take them away to, you know, like far off lands. And th- this idea that you can create an immersive experience on your phone where it takes, you know, this normal everyday world that you see around yourself and then transforms it into something that's completely different. It's such a different experience than reading something in a book or watching a movie or even playing a video game. It's something that's interactive and it's real. And I think that there's so much potential in that space to um, create like immersive experiences at museums and zoos and have educational experiences. And there's, I think there's so much potential there creatively to give us an ability to communicate uh, with each other and give each other experiences on a level that we don't have right now. So that really excited me about the potential about what we can do with that technology. Yeah, it's it, it's huge. There's uh, there was a uh, some photos from our travel site. To, I guess there's a uh, there there are a bunch of, of like relic sites where there's just like ruins of ancient buildings. And you just see like the cornice and like part of the foundations. But they put up like a sheet of like plexiglass that if you stand at the right place, it will show you what the what the contours of the actual building were like mapped against what is actually still there. And that's the sort of stuff that really gets me excited about AR, the ability to take out my phone and just hold it up and now see this is what this this is what this building was like before the British came in 1781 and and decided that it shouldn't be there yeah. anymore at this part of <laughs> this place in America. Yeah. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, so yeah, there's there's just so if it's if it's just another wave of Pokemon Go clones, 
Well, if they're good Pokemon co Go clones, but <laughs> the, the, the ability to tap into the imagination of everybody uh, with AR and also with machine learning, uh, they're, they're also, they were really pushing the idea that uh, their, their new uh, machine learning uh, ML kit is uh, all done on device so that you don't necessarily have to be doing transactions to a remote server or sending user data to a remote server to get access to uh, the advantages of, uh, of your machine learning code. Uh, and uh, I'm surprised to find that I, I was a little bit suspicious that, hey, you didn't mention the Mac in the def in the demos of this, but no, it's every it, the code will work everywhere, including on watches. And I, when you think about how machine learning can help you find out what time it is, that's pretty good too. <laughs> I was really excited when they started to really push the on-device machine learning stuff because, like, just I've been so frustrated for the last couple of years because we carry these supercomputers around in our pockets, but then we're sending all of our data off to these servers because we want everything to be cross-platform. We want to get the same data from, you know, the iOS users as we're getting from the, the Windows Phone users and the BlackBerry users and the Android users, and it's like, no, there's so much potential for what you can do on this device. You can have it do all of this processing, and this is, like, magical, and people are like, oh, Oh yeah, yeah, you know, might be magical, but you know, not you know, it's not available on Android, so <laughs> it's it stinks to be not iOS. Um, <laughs> let's let, let, actually we haven't we haven't talked about uh, uh, let's, little bits of hardware yet. Let's let's talk about uh, Watch OS. I was exp I wasn't disappointed with what they said, but I was expecting a little bit more. But nonetheless, it, they really did get super super excited and more refined about how good of a fitness device it is. Uh, and I will, J Janie and Kelly seem to be the most fit people on this panel. Perhaps <laughs> one of you <laughs> should jump in before Oliver and I speak about this. <laughs> Did, ahead, did you, you guys use it? <laughs> so this, is, this, is, this is so horribly embarrassing, but like I work out <laughs> of my house. And so basically like I don't I don't have to go anywhere. My, my my room is like 10 steps away from my office. And so like when I first got the watch, I think it had like my calorie goal, at like 350 calories a day. And it kept getting lower and lower and lower <laughs> because I just never had to leave my house for any reason. And now I think it's like 150 or something like that. And so like it's just like uh, this is not working the way that it's intended to as a fitness device because I never have to leave my house. This isn't intended for hermits. This is for people that live in like, you know, New York City and like, like walk everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't either. I work from my house too, but um, so my commute's a flight of stairs. But um, because of that, I started using Zombies Run and I started using, because I have an elliptical machine. And so I've been using Zombies Run and tracking the workout on my watch in order to, um, you know, check out the calorie goals and see if I was making it. And so far it's been super useful. And that was one of the things that sort of surprised me was as I started digging into that, I was mostly just relying on the stand reminders uh, to make sure that I pulled my head out of my laptop once in a while. But <laughs> for the most part, like that wasn't like, that was the bulk of the fitness stuff that I was doing. And so now I've started looking at other stuff. Like I can operate the zombies run app from my watch. I'm not even a big zombies as a concept fan, but this app has been really good and it gets me Few creatures up every with, day with brains to spend really, really time on the treadmill. <laughs> this well, is true. Well, well, that, that, so that, that, I've been into I... it and it's gotten me motivated. Jane. And part of that is I get to use the, the nerdery piece of having it on my watch and having my watch <laughs> track my workout and the activity sharing, which is something I've just sort of started getting into is being able to like cheer on and also smack talk. Uh, other friends of mine, <laughs> when their workouts pop up for me and like when my workouts pop up for them. So that's been actually a lot of fun. And that's only been like the last month and a half, maybe, that I've been into that. Janie, then Oliver, oh. please. Okay, so, but, um, so with, with the watch, one of the things that they mentioned yesterday during the keynote was they said like, like with if you're driving, they were going to lock your phone so that it wouldn't give you like push notifications. And I want to know, are they going to do the same thing with the watch? Because I noticed the first year that I had the watch, like I would be driving along and I get like a, a notification on my, my wrist saying and something was on Twitter. It's like, oh, I wonder what... <laughs> <laughs> I almost drove off the side of the road, and I'll, like I, I had to train myself not to look, look not to look at my watch whenever it would, would ping. And I'm like, that that would totally be like a safety feature that I think that they should do for not only for the phone but for the watch because you know if you're driving and something pings, yeah. you're you're, you're going to try to look at it, and your your hand is on the wheel. 
you start off with, I just hope that it won't say, hey, you've been sitting in this car and driving for 45 minutes. So why don't you get out at, on this highway at 70 miles an hour and take a walk after tucking and rolling <laughs> for the for the first 50 yards, of course. <laughs> yeah, how does that yeah, show up in the activity app? <laughs> Yeah, the, the the watch is always saying like the yeah you know the ten minutes to the to the hour warning when you get mm -hmm. up. It's always saying that if when I, when I'm driving, so it's like I get this notification while I'm driving. So <laughs> yep. yeah, there are a bunch. Yeah, no, of, there are a bunch of. Uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. The other thing I wanted to say was that um, when the Pokemon Go stuff first really hit off. Um, the discussion over here was sort of like, you know, one good thing is that it gets the kids out to walk around. So a lot mm -hmm. of people were just, um, so th this is where augmented reality marries the fitness <laughs> world tracker yeah. business. It's, 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 it's like, it's like carrot cake. I, they trick me into eating a vegetable, but that's okay. As long as I eat the, <laughs> eat the vegetable, but there, there, there are, but there are a bunch of really nice little uh, features in it. Uh, there's the new Siri watch face. Uh, they call it the intelligent proactive assistant, which is to me seemed a way of saying, yeah, we looked at Android Wear from a couple of years ago, and they seem to have a good idea there, where it will just show you things <laughs> that it kind of figures out that you would that would be handy at that moment. Uh, a new a new kaleidoscope watch face. All right, I was hope I, that was not on my predictions list, but glad you gave it to me. Uh, another one, another happy moment was now in addition to Mickey and Minnie Mouse, now you get uh, from Toy Story, you get Buzz, Woody, and Jesse. Uh, and little cartoons when it wakes when it wakes up of little story vignettes. Uh, that's that's cool, but I, w I was still surprised that it's the the watch has been out for this long and developers still cannot create custom watch faces. Uh, this could be the most artistic, cool additions you can make to it. I wonder what the, what the point is. You know, I wonder what the what the reasoning is behind that, um, because it has to be some real good reason. Uh, you know, otherwise they wouldn't uh, let go of the, the chance to make millions on the App Store from <laughs> Apple Watch faces. You know, I would I buy know. them. I would buy watch faces. Sure, sure. If, if I could get would. one that was functional in some way, I would gladly pay a buck or two, depending what it was. If it was my favorite band or Star Wars or Doctor Who or, you know, <laughs> hi. Like, if it's if it's some sort of nerd thing and you put it on the App Store for 99 cents, for me, it's probably a pretty easy sell. So I would love to have the Millennium Falcon. Uh, somebody yesterday posted a picture of uh, BB-8. Huh? BB-8's head on top of the activity <laughs> rings and the activity rings were orange and white and I went, yes, I will buy that, let me buy that and it's not a thing and I'm disappointed because those are the kind of things that would be awesome, like, you know, maybe a baseball in in all the Major League Baseball's colors or a basketball for Blazer fans like me, like, I would buy those so mm -hmm. I, I don't understand why not either because you can still give it the limited functionality like in the old days when we used to get games for the iPods. Like there wasn't a ton that you could do because you only had one interface mechanism and it was the little scroll wheel. So why can't we have the same sort of like hear what the limitations are, know that going in and yet at the same time go crazy. Like I think that would be a really smart approach, and that was actually something I was hoping for yesterday was more customization, not just um, extra watch faces. While those are awesome, and I'm probably going to install all of them the minute that I <laughs> feel like the betas haven't started bricking stuff for people, I'm totally in. But in the meantime, like that was the thing that I was sort of hoping for that uh, did not happen. Mm. Speaking of things that we might have been hoping would happen but did not happen. Uh, they they gave TVOS one of the whole. They said this this is going to be we're going to be talking about six things today, and I think the TVOS was number one or number two, and it was now Amazon Video is coming to Apple TV, mm. and on to number two. Next. And okay, well that that's <laughs> nice, but you, you didn't see a whole lot. It, it's not as though Apple TV is a is a you know unloved product, but I I guess I was hoping to see what are you going to be doing to make it awesomer. -er. Uh, in the fall, so yeah. I think I, th I think what uh, what's missing from the Apple TV story is uh, interaction um, with the screen, and and I you know of course they can't. What's, let me interrupt out. for one second and tell you what's missing from the Apple TV is my damn remote. 
I lost it on Thursday. <laughs> I have not found it since. And, I, and I'm saying it's not as though I walk around with it in my house. It's either on my bed or on the nightstand. I have now cleaned the entire bedroom. No laundry le or trash left the room since. OK, I'm just I'm just venting. I cannot believe that I cannot find <laughs> my remote after five days. I took I got out my old so, Roku so, three so we, out of storage and replaced it. OK, but please continue. I'm sorry to interrupt. So I had, we, I had so, to so we need uh, we need to uh, find my Apple TV remote app. On yes. The iPad. <laughs> Why isn't that a thing? There you go. Maybe we can use machine learning to say, okay, Andy, no, knowing you and having watched you for the past year, is it possible that you were, you were looking for something and then you realized that you left your headphones mm. in the other room? So without knowing it, you carry it into yeah, like you know, the living you know, room? You know, they have like, there, there's, there's this um, uh, really interesting technology for tracking ca uh, consumers uh, while listening to, um, you know, uh, sounds that make, you know, that apps make. Um, and you could uh, conceivably make an app with the uh, uh, HomePod that would um, emit some sound and use the microphone on the remotes uh, <laughs> to actually locate um, where where the where the remote is. So. And that's how they're going to sell all the HomePods. This will help you find yes. your Apple TV remote. <laughs> you tell it to play the sound, Find and then the remote will remote. ping from the underneath the couch. And there you go. A $350 remote finder. <laughs> yeah. Well, Apple also introduced a whole bunch of new hardware, including stuff that I will not be able to afford for at least another year. We will talk about that after <laughs> this from our friend Leo Laporte. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but thank you for this moment to tell you a little bit about Texture.com. Before I left on vacation, I loaded up my iPad. I got it right here. With great magazines from Texture. Texture is like Netflix for magazines. Oh, look, just got this notification. New issues of The Hollywood Reporter have been downloaded. And Sports Illustrated have been downloaded. These are all the uh, the favorites I have on Texture. And so Texture, you pay one flat rate, 10 bucks a month. You get more than 200 of the best magazines in the world. I subscribe to, uh, so I call it subscribing, but it's a lot less expensive than a subscription, right? I, uh, I have favorited and automatically download Consumer Reports. Dwell, I love, you know, seeing beautiful homes. Uh, Mother Jones, because I love following left-wing politics. People, because I love gossip. What are what are what are what is what are Kate and Pippa up to? I gotta know. Rolling Stone. Now I don't read it cover to cover, and this is the neat thing about texture. There's usually one interesting article or two, maybe in Rolling Stone, that I want to read. But which so for that I wouldn't buy the newsstand issue, or maybe I used to, or subscribe. I did do that also, but I always felt guilty about the pile of paper and the clutter on my coffee table. So this way I get that one article, and then and I don't feel bad. Uh, Sever and Self, because I like food and health. Uh, actually, I think Self is Lisa's. Oh, that's another nice thing. Uh, Lisa and I, you can have five different devices on one texture subscription. So Lisa and I share our subscription. So some of these might be hers. Shutterbug, because I'm a photography bug, but so is she. Sound and Vision, because I'm an audiophile. Sports Illustrated, that's Lisa's. She's big into the NFL. The Atlantic, great stuff being written in the Atlantic. David Frum, I love him. Hollywood Reporter, because that's, you know, I like to pretend I'm in the show business. <laughs> the New Yorker, of course, travel and leisure. I, I used to subscribe to the New Yorker. Texture is less than a subscription to the New Yorker. And I get all of this. Vanity Fair, Wired, uh, Popular Science, uh, PC Magazine. Their texture is 200 plus magazines for a lot less than you'd pay for just one. In fact, right now, it's really good because it's free for 14 days when you go to texture.com slash twit. Apple's top 2016 iPad app, one of them anyway. I mean, it really deserves it, too. It is easy to read. You get every page that's in this newsstand issue. You get back issues. You get bonus features like video. There's curated sections. I can go on and on, but why not just try it? It's free. Texture.com slash T-W-I-T. 14 days free. And we thank Texture for their support of Mac Break Weekly. Texture.com slash twit. Now back to the show. Thank you, Leo. Now, uh, Apple had to invite four or five handpicked journalists to the campus so that they could hat in hand explain, yeah, you know how we introduced that Mac Pro about being so awesome? 
Maybe we screwed up on that one. Uh, we're sorry about that. Uh, and so they made a really, really big attempt to uh, adjust that uh, on the WWDC keynote by talking about brand new uh, Pro Max and upgrades to upgrades to old ones. Now, the ones that we're already familiar with, the iMacs and the MacBook Pros, they all got the expected uh, some of the generation KB like processors, uh, some upgrades to GPU, some upgrades to uh, disk speeds. But obviously, the centerpiece, the uh, the, the centerpiece, of the whole thing was a brand new. Black Black or space gray, black enough in my in my office. After with my lighting, it will be black enough. Uh, the iMac Pro uh, with up to <laughs> with a 27 inch 5K display, up to an eight up to 18 cores of Xenon Xeon CPUs, Radeon Vega graphics, up to 11 teraflops. Uh, the CPU processor up to 22 teraflops, 128 gigs of RAM. Now this was the one audible gasp. <laughs> For some reason, in the audience, said 120 gigabytes of RAM. They, I think, even the speaker was kind of uh, hit back by that, uh, as well as I think four terabytes of internal graphics. Uh, also, they, I think, they made a bit, when they showed you the cutaway, uh, they also made a big point of saying we decided that maybe fans are a good idea, like having some fans, <laughs> some sort of a active cooling system, so that I don't know three years later we'd have to apologize to people because we couldn't put more process, more powerful processors because our passive cooling system could not handle it uh five grand in its base configuration is going to be available in december this was a preview uh and uh, the, the kids seem to like it i was on uh, facebook a good friend of mine is a, a colorist for dc comics which means that she does nothing but essentially rig light and color uh every single uh, page of every single uh, of, of all the comics that she does and she said I, I asked her asked for her permission to use this quote why does the word teraflops make me so tingly so <laughs> this is so the, so this is definitely very much up her alley. Uh, I'm I'm this did seem like a new wave of respect for the Mac. Uh, Oliver, like given uh, what's who, who's buying one? I, I'm gonna say I'm gonna put it to you first because you have you have probably the biggest excuse to buy one given what your company <laughs> makes. And can you buy two and hire me as a consultant and let me borrow it for a year? Yeah, let's talk about that uh, offline. <laughs> um, we'll talk. Oh, Andy of, stole my of, idea. Of course, we're gonna. Uh, of course, uh, we got, we, we're gonna get one uh, or maybe one more. And uh, I'm looking forward to see how well it actually performs. So uh, recently, I did um, a live stream uh, in. Berlin and the room was very hot, so um, I used a new one of the newer MacBook Pros, and it has this um, uh, logic built in that you know um, reduces the processor power if some um, if, if it's in danger of overheating or something like that. And if you do a live stream, um, that happens quite fast. So after about ten minutes or so. Uh, suddenly the MacBook Pro doesn't have 3.4 gigahertz anymore. It just uh, t tunes down the processor to 1 gigahertz. And then um, that kind of made me a little bit, um, that experience made me a little bit uh, cautious um, about, uh, you know, uh, uh, small, you know, thin Pro machines. So, um they Apple acknowledging on the stage that there, they, there is a cooling issue, um, and they have, uh, and they claim they have solved it uh, with the iMac Pro. I'm I'm a little bit cautious about that. Um, other than that, the machine specs really really sound exciting. I mean, it's it's the the, the dark gray itself. It's gonna it's gonna be giving you twenty percent more performance. <laughs> 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 yes, because 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 it's because of course it's absorbing light and therefore getting more energy from from the the, the solar solar <laughs> flares and such. I suppose, although yeah. I, I can't imagine it being much more uh, powerful than this. They kept uh, underscoring about how well, this is going to be great for like VR content creation. All these GPUs is going to be great for machine learning. Uh, most of the machine learning development is being done uh, on GPUs these days. So I don't I don't think this is going to be. This will probably be a little bit overkill for like watching Hulu, 
but it will probably do a great job <laughs> watching Hulu, especially the 4K stuff. Uh, is, is any, uh, and of course, I can't. Aff- of course, I can't drop five grand on <laughs> on this. Uh, I, my, my car is not worth four, five grand. Uh, but is this is, is, is this a and that's and that's the entry level configuration? I mean, exactly. Who wants that? <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, you want 18 cores, and I think if you, I think I go for I that. Say, you can you can you can safely assume that you can multiply the you know what's the base configuration six cores so 18 cores yeah. is going to be three times that much and then uh you don't want 128 uh, you know you want the three terabytes uh ssd is, is it, is, is it going to be like buying it take you way past 20 grand so it's like <laughs> yeah it's, it's gonna be like buying a bmw where, where it's like oh you got a bmw oh you got the 320 model okay <laughs> That's, hey, hey! It's still a BMW. I, I, you know, I, I'm different. I needed the M5, but hey, good, good, good for you. you. Good for you. It's, it's good. It's good uh, that you mentioned that because I think Apple uh, really borrows from the uh, German car makers, where you know you buy an, you buy a BMW and it comes without the steering wheel. You have to buy a steering wheel extra. So that's a different trim package. Yeah. Of, <laughs> yes, but, no, we're taking that to the Nurburgring. <laughs> but is this so overall? Like, uh, I, I, I won't, I won't speak for anybody else. I've, I've been not worried necessarily about the Mac, but I've been very, very much looking for a sign that Apple loves the Mac as much as Mac users love them. Uh, is is this a really good sign that look at how much we're investing in this? Or, or is Apple <laughs> the the snarky comment that came to mind as I was taking notes through the keynote was Apple's message seems to be we love the Mac, we think it's a great machine for building iOS apps on. So we're giving you the greatest <laughs> iOS app yeah, development machine ever. It'll compile your iOS app so fast. Faster like, than ever so, before. So um, uh, have, you, have you checked out the number of Macs they sell? And then they claim like 16 million app developers. Everyone needs a Mac. Of that. Every one of those people needs a Mac, and some have two. So I think that makes for a pretty big chunk of all the Macs sold. Um, <laughs> And um, of course, um, you know, one of the interesting things was that they, uh, at the same time, they really stepped up the iPad iOS uh, uh, game with with uh, some of the key features that were missing previously f- with the yeah. iOS uh, drag and drop support, uh, which right. actually means cool. that you can now use multiple apps to work together on one project and mm-hmm. that's kind of what's been missing from the iPad right. to make it a a, va- a, a viable replacement yeah. for you know uh, so at the same time they've really risen our hopes uh, for the Mac they also introduced the ultimate Mac killer <laughs> yeah. I think <laughs> Janie, Janie what do you think so, um, like, my, I've had Apple computers basically my entire life. We bought an Apple IIe back in 1985, and I remember back in 93 or whatever that everybody kept making fun of me because I had an Apple computer and I didn't have a Windows computer. And my dad told me, well, Apple computers are so much better than other computers because they made Jurassic Park on those computers. And, like, I went to school for audio <laughs> engineering and video editing, and so, like, we had – you know, Macs for all of this content creation, like Pro Tools originally was on the Mac and eventually got ported over to Windows. And until maybe like 2006, 2007, like if you wanted to do really high quality content creation, you bought an Apple computer. But over the last 10 years, they just haven't been keeping up with all of that stuff. You know, they introduced Final Cut X instead of you know, Final Cut 8 and, and it, it really cut down on all of the pro stuff and I know that a lot of people in the gaming industry that I talked to have been complaining for years that they can't really do high level game development on a Mac like I have, I, I like I said I, I maxed out the 5k Retina iMac a couple of years ago and anytime I turn on like Maya or I turn on um, Unreal or I turn on Unity like the, the computer it just 
cr- slows to a crawl and it's impossible to actually go in and do any high quality like work with that. And I've been dreading the day that I have to break, you know, my, my 35 year streak of never owning a non Apple computer to buy <laughs> uh, a crappy windows computer that I have to build <laughs> myself you know, for parts that I, I, I salvaged from, you know, like various places on the internet, like a savage, you know, back from the seventies <laughs> in order to do what everybody else has been doing for years. And so I think that this was kind of like a, a response to that people complaining, people have me complaining about them going like, fine, here, here is your computer where you can make your fancy games and stuff. <laughs> you kids and your beep boops. We used to make our computers out of twigs and animal skins. <laughs> Terra flops. It would flop and kill us. That's how big and cumbersome they are. <laughs> Silly kids these days. <laughs> how, about you? how about you, Kelly? Are you keeping the faith? Yeah, I think... I think they were nice updates. I didn't expect new design or, um, you know, anything like that. I was glad to see that uh, that everything sort of got refreshed. All the all the laptops and all the desktops because we know there's a pro coming down the pipe at some point. So I was glad to see that everything got what I feel like was an appreciable update. Uh, it seems like it's it's been long enough, and I liked that they got them. Um, I felt like. Uh, Oliver was exactly right. Like, look at all the awesome stuff you could do with our new Macs, and now let us show you why you don't want one because you can do all this other (laughs) stuff on your iPad. Uh, So I thought that was really interesting because it felt to me like that's, again, a thing that I don't know how much Apple was doing of before, which is listening to customers. And lots of people have said, these are the things that are keeping me from making an iPad my primary device. And a lot of people are finding ways to work around that. And even more so, uh, a lot of people have now just sort of found the way to forego whatever it is that's keeping them from using the iPad because they want so badly to have that be their main computer. And now a lot of the complaints that people had are things that are being resolved with this new update. And I'm pretty excited about that part. Yeah, we're certainly getting new CPUs, and that's great. Uh, but I, I couldn't, I couldn't just help, I couldn't help but think that the energy level and the excitement level that Apple conveyed during the iOS section of sections of the keynote were so much greater than. It's not as though they were, they were dissing the Mac at all. But uh, they, uh, they told us that the new, the name for the new version of Mac OS is High Sierra, uh, which is. Then they paused for 10 minutes so that everybody could tweet their own jokes about that name. Uh, but it's a, as, as a sequel to Sierra, it's, it's their usual now development update where it seems to be Sierra is the one where we're going to have really big, huge improvements. And then High Sierra will be the one where we just sort of make adjustments to that. Um, Craig Federighi was saying that specifically that this is to, the point of High Sierra is to, quote, provide a platform for future innovations and to show off how awesome the Mac is and High Sierra is. He showed off it's got a web browser. It's called Safari, and it will <laughs> it will turn off audio that that uh, audio yes. ads that come on automatically. Mail now you can edit in split panes, so you can have. Okay, um, really, the only thing yeah. that was uh, the only thing that was super seemed super cool was kind of like old news, where the new uh, Apple file system, uh, which is they're finally getting rid of what they've have been basing the Mac uh, file system on for what the past twenty years to something that's mm-hmm. more modern, that's more reliable, that's a lot, lot, lot faster. But it wasn't the sort of thing that gets people excited about being a Mac owner or gets them excited about. Gee, if I had if I had two thousand dollars under my mattress to buy a Mac next year, <laughs> it didn't think well. Or I could spend eight hundred dollars of that on cookies and beer, and have twelve hundred dollars <laughs> to spend on my next Windows laptop. <laughs> I'm not saying people this should do that, plan. but I'm saying that yeah, it's like it it didn't see it didn't seem like oh my god, I'm so excited about what's coming up as as uh, as I was with uh, was coming up with uh, with iOS. Uh, and boy, was there a lot to talk about there. They really were trying, as Oliver said, they're really trying to say, don't buy a MacBook for God's sakes. That would be silly when we have these new iPad Pros, uh, which, uh, as was rumored, there's the new t- uh, 10.5 inch model. That's roughly the same size as the probably gone now 9.7 inch one uh, because they uh, reduced the sizes of the, be- of the bezels. Uh, but they added better CPUs. They've added uh, better screens to both the both of the iPad Pro models. Uh, the most ex- to, to me, one of the most exciting things is that they have now added sort of a variable. They've doubled the, the screen refresh rate from 60 hertz to 120 times per second, which means that it will just everything will feel a lot smoother and a lot more liquid. But it will also mean 
that when uh, you're using, like, for instance, the Apple Pencil, it can sample a lot faster where uh, where the, the pencil is going. Uh, they didn't they did not announce any hardware changes to the Apple Pencil, but now uh, the uh, latency of the pencil has now dropped magically from 40 uh, to uh, 40 uh, milliseconds to uh, 20 milliseconds, which puts it little even a little bit faster than the Microsoft Surface Pencil, which was pro pretty much top dog uh, in this in this uh, place. Uh, but it will also uh, dip dip down the frame rate uh, down to 24 frames per second if you're just looking at a photo there's no need to like lash out the battery if you're just looking at a picture uh, so i'm really excited about what that experience is going to look like and it goes uh, on and on and on with features that they've added uh, they've added a new application dock they've made uh, they've actually finally given you drag and drop between panes they've given you something that looks more like spaces so that if you have your pairs of apps like when i was taking notes in omni outliner and tweet live tweeting in twitter when i'm reese when i'm writing a column it'll be scrivener in one pane and the google search app in the other so now you can sort of save those as spaces and keep coming back to them but most of all it's just all about it really seems like give us a give us seven hundred dollars to twelve hundred dollars for an iPad, and we will make you forget your allegiance to any other god or country because we're giving you such an awesome <laughs> thing. Uh, it's it's the it's the one thing that got me excited about spending money at Apple. Uh, <laughs> is it the, uh, is anybody here? I'll throw this open. Is anybody here like a really big iPad user? I, I use this. My it is my it is my go to field computer. My MacBook is like la is tied down with chains and cables at my desk because I almost never take it out of the office now. Well, that's just because think, the keyboard, think, though, uh, right? <laughs> oh, Janie? <laughs> that's just because <laughs> the keyboard, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I, 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 guarantee, I guarantee you that if you bought a new MacBook any time in the, in the last year, my keyboard on my MacBook is way better than yours. So that's the, <laughs> that, that. Actually, I, I, will, I, I don't want to. I don't want to retract, but I have to say that five thousand dollars minimum for an iMac Pro, and you get this crappy sucks a duck's butt keyboard. <laughs> that same super 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 flat Magic keyboard, but it now has a, a numeric keypad. I don't know anybody who wants a five thousand dollar five thousand dollar iMac. Who actually maybe maybe this is it? Maybe they realize that whatever keyboard we give a developer or content creator who spends five thousand dollars, this will not be good enough. We can just give them like a sticker <laughs> representing <laughs> here is where the uh, the, Mac, the the keyboard would go, and no one would notice it was just a sticker. I'm sorry, Jane. I'm sorry, Jane. I interrupted you. Well, um, Oliver can go. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Oliver, please. Yeah, I, I, I forgot what I wanted to say. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have that effect. Is, it, is, any, yes. is anybody using uh, iPads right now? And, well, and uh, so, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now I remember. I remember. So uh, I, uh, when the iPad first came out, I was so super excited about it, and so I uh, I uh, threw away my MacBook right away and got an iPad. <laughs> and, and about two minutes later, I went out to the trash can and got the MacBook Pro back. <laughs> um, and I think I went through that three times or four times. Um, anytime, uh, you know, iOS 9, iOS whatever, 6, 7, 8, 9, every time I try to give it another shot. And uh, every time I, uh, I found out that it doesn't, it didn't live up to what I needed to do. Um, and so I'm kind of like, you know, uh, this time I'm, I'm waiting a little bit before I throw out my MacBook and uh, <laughs> see what's, what's going to happen. And I think one of the biggest uh, issues Apple faces in this uh, thing is that the iPad apps are still not at the same quality level than the Mac apps. And um, I mean, with a few exceptions, maybe. But even, you know, like Infinity Photo, um, that ha doesn't have the depth of, you know, uh, a Photoshop app or, you know, and, and so you always have those, you, you might get like 70% of your jobs done with the iPad app, but there's also the 30% that make you um, go to your Mac apps. And, and that's kind of where... You know, a real pro user doesn't want to switch tools too much. I want a tool that, um, you know, um, basically covers all my needs. And um, and and with the iPad apps um, a little bit behind, I think the key issue is um, how do you make a, a business out of making great iPad apps? 
and um, some some developers seem to be able to pull it off. And I, I think the the guys who make Infinity um, um, are probably one of those because they get heavily featured. But there's not going to be a second photo editing app on the iPad that gets featured as much by Apple. And um, so it's like, uh, you know, uh, you have to be incredibly uh, lucky um, to to build a business out of that. And mm-hmm. I think that's one of the things um, they need to address. And in the keynote, interestingly, they stab, they, they had some stabs at the issue, but they didn't really, you know, I, I haven't seen any um, a solution for that. So the the one joke about the uh, uh, the fourteen year old girl getting a hundred million dollar funding uh, for her iPad app or iPhone app. Uh, that's kind of like how I think it's it's kind of it's kind of interesting how they how they see the world. Um, you know, with <laughs> so much money uh, in the bank. Um, well. uh, I think. That's not the real world, right? Uh, you know, Kelly, the well, it's, the it's, it's all, it's, it's, girls, they they uh, they don't make money of it. They are fed by their parents, and they don't have to pay for <laughs> rent. And I'm just so going to let Kelly handle this. Go ahead, Kelly. <laughs> well, I mean, that's part of it. But you know, one of the one of the other things about it about App Camp specifically is that uh, we're not trying to turn everyone into an iOS developer. Part of what we're trying to do is expose our developers to all the pieces that go into software development. So even if you're a one person shop, you still probably spend a little bit of time on marketing, a little bit of time on testing, a little bit of time on on getting the word out there about the app that you built. So we try to expose them to all the pieces of that because there's a lot of stuff that goes into software that isn't necessarily hunching over a laptop and typing mystery stuff into Xcode or whatever. So we try to show them more than that. And sometimes people can get really interested in something like uh, Andy's friend who does lighting and coloring for DC Comics. Like that's a whole profession and that's not necessarily a person that you think of or a career that you think of when you think about somebody who writes comic books. Uh, you know, the same way that you don't necessarily think about the person who breaks stuff all day long as an important piece of software production, but that's totally a thing that needs to happen. So um, most of what we're trying to do is just expose people to that. And I'm really excited to see what iOS 11 is doing, primarily because I like the potential of this. Uh, Readle came out with their document suite a couple of months. I want to say it's like a month ago or maybe two. And uh, in theirs, you can drag and drop between their apps if you have both of them up in split screen. And they found a way to do that within their own two applications uh, before drag and drop was a thing on iOS 11. And so I'm really excited to see the potential of this. Now that there's a regular doc like you have on your laptop and there's an entire files app that will allow you to juggle things around and, and get at all that stuff that people have been complaining about on iOS for years. Uh, I'm really excited to see where that's going to go and how other developers are going to use that. That for me was one of the most interesting pieces because um, I feel like and I say a lot that iOS is pretty mature. There's not a lot that's that's going to be super wow out there that people are going to be able to uh, look at because we've we've done a whole lot of you know wow on on the iOS side, and it doesn't seem like there's necessarily a whole lot further to go until Apple says, yeah, we should totally show you the file system. And <laughs> here you go. It's all right here down the side of your screen. And I was really excited to see that, and I'm really excited to see. Like I said, where that where people look at that and see the obvious connection of I'm going to totally be able to do this thing now that I've been trying to do on iOS for years, and now they're going to be able to do it. And I can't wait to see over the summer how those things evolve and how people are going to be able to make that happen. And uh, I and it, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm super pumped about it. Uh, I want to be excited about. Hi Sierra in the same way, but I'm not because this is the bolt tightening release. It's mm-hmm. it's almost like Mac OS has gotten on the evolution revolution track, just like the iPhones have. 
So we, you know, we get the new release that's the revolution and then we get all the stuff that like tightens that down, which is the evolution part. Like we're going to take all this stuff we gave you that was kind of weird and sort of clunky and we're going to refine it, make it better in the next release. And so I'm excited to see what we get in new hardware this summer that's going to be able to best utilize some of that stuff on the phone side. I'm going to be really excited about that. And speaking of Person to person Apple Pay, I think, was one of the really exciting things that came out yesterday. And I don't know, Andy, if that's on your list or not, but it was one of the things that really stood out to me. Yep, that's that's pretty cool. If you have to, you have to do it through iMessages. So if someone at the table is using Android, <laughs> you can say, "Oh, I'm that's that's the modern. Oh, I'm sorry, I left my wallet at home. Like, oh, I would so love to pick up half of this, but I you have Android Aww. and I have. Uh, so apparently, uh, so yes, really really easy uh, using uh, using Touch ID. Uh, as a matter of fact, now there is a kind of a Apple virtual digital debit card that your money gets paid into if you do this. Then of course. You can transfer it back to your bank, but yeah, it makes it makes messages more relevant. It makes messages more interesting. I, I like the. I just like all the. Uh, when, when I say that I use the iPad as a replacement for my notebook, I don't necessarily mean it does everything the notebook would do. I just mean that it does everything that I need my Mac to do when I'm out of the office, where I'm not going to be writing an 80,000, 90,000 word, 150,000 word book project, but I might like to write part of a chapter or edit an entire chapter. Um, I did. <laughs> I'm a sucker that this, it, the, the, the demo of Affinity Photo did cost me <laughs> 10 bucks because it looks so good. They <laughs> Apple Apple used this to show Affinity showed a photo to show how uh, super super fast uh, and super super credible as a thousand dollar computer the new iPad is, uh, and yeah, when I'm home I would I would like to have uh, Photoshop, but there are times where I'm on vacation or I'm out I'm traveling on business for two or three or four days, and there are a couple of photos that I really want to process, and if I had the ability to smart mask out the the uh, windows in the background and change the t color temperature of those windows. Before I send this to my editor as part of my column, I would definitely do that, but I don't have that, so I will just take what I can get. Uh, but if I have a relatively inexpensive photo app, lets me not just get things done, but also, gee, I'm on I'm I'm on this bus for the next hour. Hey, I, I happen to have I I know that I happen to have like all 80 photos from the roller derby uh, that I shot last week. I think I'll just have some fun editing photos instead of you know reading a book or doing anything like that. So I, I like I really like everything they did, especially the files app that you that you brought up. Uh, it's a real big pain point in iOS uh, when you're using an iPad out of, the, out of the field. Like, how do I get a file that I can? I have this fistful of electrons in my hand if i had if this were a windows machine or a macbook or an android device i could just open up a lid throw these electrons in and i would have the file visible to the device but this is an apple device and i'm not trying to get it from an apple device from another apple device so i'm kind of hosed so the ability i i, I like the i like the fact that it it, it uh, makes that easier it connects to every other cloud service and i also like the fact that it absolutely forced in a way that ma made him sound like he was he was trying to get poison out of his mouth it forced him to say the word google during an apple <laughs> keynote and you know there was a lot of there was a lot of argument about that point <laughs> janie so um, my background before I went into software development was, like I said, um, audio engineering and video editing. So back 10 years ago when I was doing a lot of compositing and special effects stuff for video editing, like I had a Wacom tablet and I had the stupid little like like Wacom stylus. And I would have to sit there and like like draw on the table while looking at the screen. And it was such a pain in the ass. And I was so annoyed by it. I kept wishing that there was some way that I could just draw directly on all of the different images that that I was working on. So when I saw that the iPad Pro was coming out a couple of years ago and they were including this pencil so that I could finally have this workflow that I thought I was going to, that I wanted like 10 years ago, I was like really excited. I went out and bought like a, a completely maxed out like first generation iPad Pro. I was really excited. I bought a pencil. I bought all the stuff and I have never used any of these things. <laughs> the, the, the pencil is still in the box. Um, I occasionally come over and uh, wipe all the dust off of the, the iPad Pro and sometimes I'll I'll plug it in because I will go so long without using it that it will completely drain the battery without me ever having had touched it. But like, 
I think there's a lot of potential there for people doing creative work. Like, I really wish that Apple would show some love to Final Cut Pro and um, Motion and really, like, in- integrate those with the iPad Pro because I would love to be able to go in and do my compositing on my iPad Pro, take my, my composited image, put it into the cloud and be able to access it on my main computer. I don't want to have to do all of my video editing on, you know, this this awkward 13 inch thing that I have to hold and give myself carpal tunnel syndrome. I like to be able to do my, my one piece of my workflow on that device and then be able to do the rest of my workflow somewhere else. Hmm. That's, that's, it's like, that's interesting um, that, that you mentioned this because I think um, that's actually where uh, the whole business is, is sort of headed. It's like um, this, this hybrid um, computing uh, where you have like a handheld device like an iPad, but the app that runs on the iPad actually is on a desktop machine. Um, so it's like uh, you can see some of that with the... Um, a logic a remote or um, uh, other apps like that um, where you actually use the iPad to control the desktop app and yeah. and 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 that makes it um, you know a very interesting um, experience and I think that's 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 you know the big discussion of um, is gonna is Mac OS gonna evolve to be more like iOS or as it seems now, is iOS evolving more to be like uh, macOS? And in 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 uh, the discussion, I think uh, needs to go into um, you know how how do you leverage uh, the best of both things? Um, and uh, you know also the, the the topic of the file uh, files app. Uh, I, I consider this a uh, um, a, a a big um, you know. Uh, you know, failure uh, over the last couple of years because when Apple came out with the iOS first and they had removed all this files model with the, you know, uh, hierarchical file system that you can't explain to anybody. Um, it's kind of, it, it kind of was, you know, the, the ideal thing to do, but it seems like couple of years on, they haven't figured out a good alternative, so they are going back to the good old files and folders model um, instead of, you know, having been able to come up with a, a good alternative. And that's where also I think the machine learning comes in. Um, is like uh, solving the problem of, you know, managing hundreds and thousands of files, uh, uh, most notably with the photos. Um, um, you know, uh, indexing or, uh, you know, tagging hundreds of thousands of photos is like an, a, a task that nobody can can do. So machine learning is, is essential to being able to manage that kind of, um, you know, volume um, of information. And um, so there's a couple of pieces um, that I see fall, you know, falling in place uh, for, you know, um, a future operating system uh, that might be down the line, like in five to ten years. Mm. Well, hopefully, we'll we'll see it coming. Uh, when, when I when I talk about how I really wish that Apple would show some more love to the Mac, things they could do if they just revamped the Finder and said that we were using this this wonderful machine learning you may drink now uh, to <laughs> instead of navigating through files and folders and directories, here is a tab that simply says we think here are, here are documents you tend to use a lot on a Tuesday afternoon. We're putting them exactly, here in case exactly. you need them the next time. And we're not seeing any yeah. of that kind of at, at that kind of love. Uh, so I would or, like to, or, really like to the see way, what uh, The way the brain works, uh, organizing information uh, spatially and temporarily. So it's like, I want the file that I worked on last Tuesday when I set the day upward. Um, <laughs> and, yep. and that kind of, you know, uh, yeah, that's, that's, yep. that's definitely something where machine learning can help manage uh, the information. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. There's definitely an opportunity there. Um, before we go to our last commercial and then get to our picks of the week, just a quick mention that uh, let's salute, <laughs> let's let's do our Hunger Games salute to the fallen. Uh, no men- <laughs> no mention of the iPad Mini. Not looking good for the iPad Mini. 
No mention of the Mac Mini, which was surprising. And I've been looking all night to see, well, maybe someone talked to somebody and Apple said something there. So I don't think the Mac Mini is dead. But then again, I'm sorry to say that I did turn up in April. Uh, Apple did say, we think that the Mac Mini is a very important part of the Mac's future. And what you know, oh, God. <laughs> like, time, time, oh, no. time, time, it's time for the Mac Mini to update its LinkedIn profile because that's not a good thing to hear the boss say. Uh, so let's let's keep your finger <laughs> fingers crossed because um, I uh, the I think they're I think they're trying to say that uh, with with some credibility that the i that the uh, that the uh, iMac is sort of like the default Mac the default mes desktop Mac for sure uh, and maybe they're trying to figure out where the Mac Mini sits in there I kind of like the Mac Mini if I was my next desktop I think was going to be the Mac Mini but let's see how that works out uh, but we'll get to if, coming up next uh, our everyone's picks of the week but before that. It's so the last message from Leo Laporte. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, we'll get back to MacBreak Weekly in just a sec. The picks of the week and all that. But I got to tell you about our sponsor. I came back just from vacation just to tell you about ZipRecruiter. I love ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes it easy to hire the right person fast. That's the bottom line. If you're in charge of hiring at your company, whether you're a, like me, a sole proprietor, or you've got an HR department and you're it, uh, you know the hiring is a challenge. I mean, it's important, very. It's the most important job in the company, let's face it. Because a, a company, what is a company? It's a bunch of people gathered together to, with, a, with a unified purpose, right? Those people, company, it's made of people, just like Soylent Green. So when you're hiring, you're really composing your company. You can, a good hire will make a huge difference. A bad hire will make a huge difference. Just different directions. So get the right person He's out there. She's out there in any industry, anywhere in the country by going to ZipRecruiter.com. Now, one of the things they do, when you post to ZipRecruiter, you're posting to 100 plus job sites, plus Twitter, plus Facebook. You're really getting your posting out there. But from your point of view, the best thing is all those applications, all those applicants, and believe me, you'll start getting applicants. They'll start rolling in within 24 hours. I think it's like 80% of all jobs posted on ZipRecruiter get a qualified candidate within the first day. But they don't call your phone. Your phone doesn't ring off the hook. Your inbox doesn't fill up. It all goes into the ZipRecruiter interface that, where they, they kind of pre-format the resumes. Um, you can have screening questions there. So you don't even have to, you know, f the follow-up is automatic. Okay, you'll want this job. All right, well, answer this this questionnaire or or write me an essay that you know you can you can screen them that way. You you'll get the formatted resume. You'll get the answers to your questions. You can you can screen out the people who are just aren't going to work. Rank the rest of them and hire the right person fast in days. In fact, we're so confident you're going to love it. You're going to join the million companies plus that use ZipRecruiter, including some of the biggest companies in the world, including ours, our little company. When you go to ZipRecruiter.com slash twit, ZipRecruiter.com slash T-W-I-T, and you'll get a free trial. You get to try it for free. You're going to love it. There's no reason not to try this. Just give me, do me a favor. Just try it once. ZipRecruiter.com slash twit. I think you'll be back. We have used it many times. ZipRecruiter.com slash twit. Now back to Andy and the gang. Thank you, Leo, from me and the gang. Time for Picks of the Week. Let's start off with Kelly. Kelly, what do you got for us today? First, I'm sort of surprised to find out I'm in a gang. <laughs> oh, you're um, in a gang. You're, if, if you're, you know, it's funny, you know, <laughs> once once someone realizes their prints are nowhere on the crime scene, suddenly they're not part of the gang anymore. <laughs> uh, I'm disappointed, uh, so Kelly. I'm disappointed. I well, no, go ahead anyway. The two is mandatory. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't know. Um, so my tips, my my cool pick thing, whatever, um, is actually free. I know sometimes I have really uh, low cost ones and, and this one actually doesn't cost you anything. Um, take your phone with the case on it and then and this is the, the Apple leather case. This works with uh, every case I've tried so far. Tuck a 20 into the back of your case because I have found that I am far more likely and it doesn't hurt the case at all if I can get it back in there. Um, it doesn't change how it fits or anything like that. And uh, I find that it's easier for me to leave the house without my wallet than it is without my phone. And if I end up in a situation where Apple Pay doesn't work, I can always um, 
pull the 20 out of the back of my phone and get by until I can get to where my wallet is and, and, you know, bring it with me going forward. So, you know, if I end up at lunch and don't have a credit card with me or something, um, I can still pay and, and that kind of thing. So that's my free tip. And I actually know someone who I mentioned that to, and they bought a case for their phone so that they could tuck a 20 behind it (laughs) so that they could do this going forward. Uh, my second pick is a very inexpensive pick. And uh, you can actually, uh, I think you can sort of see it behind me most of the time. And it's uh, these little paper strips because you can use them to fold paper stars. And learning to fold paper stars is very easy. And uh, it's the thing that I discovered before the fidget spinner was an option. So (laughs) what I do sometimes when I'm thinking to myself, when when I'm thinking through a problem or I'm trying to troubleshoot something on my computer that isn't working like it should, uh, I fold a few paper stars. I also do this when I'm recording podcasts because it also helps me keep me helps keep me from typing. And, and for like people I told who are you before, watching I have a really video, loud Kelly, keyboard. <laughs> for people who are watching video, Kelly just held up held up a very very tall decorative vase filled with what looks to be hundreds and hundreds of little 3D origami paint, paper stars in in a rainbow of colors. Yes, uh, they are. Um, it's it's easy. I get the little strips of paper from uh, Kino Kunia, which is the little uh, a bookstore here. We have one in Portland, and um, they're uh, it's it's a nice sort of relaxing thing. It's sort of like paper cranes, but I did a bunch of paper cranes and I never got them to come out looking nice. So uh, I fold paper stars. It's very easy. You sort of tie a little knot and then fold it all up, and then uh, you push in each side, and it pops up into a star. It's pretty easy to learn. And uh, you can buy these little strips, and there are a bunch of colors in the strips. I can fan that out here for you. So you get a bunch of colors, and and uh, you're only seeing three colors in this one because I'm partway through that one, and uh, there's more in this one here. So um, that's like, and then uh, the red, yellow, and orange from these is the top of of what's in the vase right now. So uh, that's the thing that I would offer you. Um, For people who find the fidget spinner sort of awkward or it wasn't really a thing, uh, sit down for a minute and um, fold a few paper stars. And uh, I also find it a little bit relaxing. So there you go. This is also why I learned ukulele. I decided because my my computers <laughs> were, were giving me so much trouble. I thought that if I have something like a paintbrush or like a flute, some skill I don't know how to do, and every time like I have to reboot or I'm so frustrated that I really want to get up and walk away, if I just pick up this ukulele and practice a new chord, I bet I could learn this thing. And I'll be darned. In 11 months, I learned four chords <laughs> because maybe that says more about the more about the stability of my computers than anything else. Uh, Jay. Any, uh, what would you like to share with us? Uh, Besides yeah, Mr. Redora, but over there. <laughs> yeah. Say hi, Delia. <laughs> she doesn't look very happy. <laughs> uh, I have, I get a lot of people who come and ask me for suggestions about, like, they're interested in learning Swift or they're interested in iOS programming, and they always want to know, like, what I would recommend for them if they wanted to get into learning iOS programming. So I've got a couple of, of suggestions. Um, so if you're completely new to iOS and you haven't done anything at all with it, um, I highly recommend Ray Wenderlich's um, iOS Apprentice and The Swift Apprentice. Um, both of those books are uh, maintained and they're updated every single year. So every time they change Swift, every time they change the, the operating system and any changes that are made, that that gets maintained. And so that one is one I'd recommend if you're just getting started out. And if you're more of an intermediate person, I highly recommend um, Hacking with Swift by Paul Hudson. Uh, right now he has a WWDC um, sale going on where you can get like six or seven of his books for only $50. And he also maintains those and they're really like awesome. And they give you like like hands-on ability to go in and actually like type all of the code. So you actually like learn it because if you just read it, you're not going to do as well with it. And like Eric Sedun's um, uh, Swift Style Guide's also on sale because it's WWDC and so is uh, Christina Moulton's uh, RESTful API book. So just there's a lot of really awesome authors who are doing really cool um, technical materials that have deals on their stuff for WWDC. So um, if you're looking to get into programming and you're interested in that, that is my tip of the week. Super. Oliver, what have you got? I've got the... uh the best upgrade for MacBook Pro owners, and that's uh, cooling gel packs. And I think <laughs> you should get some 
they work fantastic. They take your MacBook Pro from one gigahertz to three point four gigahertz. So that's <laughs> I think the most uh, effective. So they are way upgradable. Of <laughs> yes, you should buy are. a new computer. <laughs> you just cool them down when they get too hot. That's like the tip of the week. You, you just want to you just want to back it down when you start to see like cracks forming when it's about to have one of those 1980s <laughs> music video <laughs> frozen rows shattering to pieces. So so effects. so one of the interesting uh, learnings was that um, actually the uh, the the uh, the housing the the MacBook uh, Pro housing is actually quite good at uh, uh, transporting uh, heat. So <laughs> when I put the uh, the MacBook Pro on the ice cubes. Um, I, I could use that, um, you know, uh, to cool myself down by putting my hands on the uh, on the hand uh, the wrist rest uh, wrist rest wrist rests um, on the on the on the uh, enclosure. So that was quite yeah. nice. So that, that's an excellent point. I think I still have like a a scar on like the outside of my big toe on my right foot because in summer months I'd be like sitting cross-legged on the floor with my MacBook like on my lap and that's where like the corner of it would hit me and it would always be do I really want to make this deadline or do I want to have any flesh left on my <laughs> it's again again cooling is a problem with advanced CPUs uh, my, my pick of the week is something that I've been resisting for quite a while uh, but decided to give it a, a full shot a couple weeks ago it's uh, the Grammarly a service. You go to Grammarly.com. Uh, it's a plugin for your browser, and it's uh, and it's a service for your Mac. What it is is it's an expanded grammar checker that works everywhere that you type text. So, uh, for instance, uh, just last night I was writing my emails, and I could uh, it, I was using the the web client for Outlook, and I can click the click a button in Grammarly inside this inside this the stock editor that's in Outlook, and suddenly I get popped out into a Grammarly text editor where there is. What I call the nudge column on the right, as I type, it is underlining some things with yellow saying that, you know that you said actually twice before. Maybe you want to choose something else. And it would also the, I, I call it the nudge bar because it would also do things like, you know what, when, when you say whelp, that's sort of like a colloquialism, isn't it? And I want to say, yes, it is. That makes it more folksy and accessible. That's why I chose it. <laughs> so, but but, but it, it, I'm, I'm finding it, it's, it really is quite handy to... Uh, just remind you when you make certain things that are grammatically correct but maybe not great or even when you misplace a call, comma or someplace uh, or when you it'll, it won't automatically warn you I will not let you post this you just have this has a, this paragraph has an 18 word sentence in it it will just remind you that maybe that's kind of maybe you should warn the reader that they may want to like get a drink of water before they start reading this sentence because it's, it's kind of a marathon uh, so uh, the so uh, it, it really is helping out a little bit the only other disadvantage of it aside from it pointing out that i'm not a great writer is that it really is kind of pricey if you buy it uh, you can buy it on a yearly plan a quarterly plan or a monthly plan uh i think the first week's tr trial is free but uh, they really want you to sign up for the yearly plan. The yearly plan is, is ten bucks a month. Quarterly, it's ten twenty bucks a month. If you buy it for one month, it's thirty bucks a month. And I <laughs> don't. I, I feel like I, I feel like I. That's a lot of money to spend for someone to tell me that after twenty or thirty years of writing professionally, I still have a long way to go. I know that. Believe me, my interior monologue is nothing <laughs> like that, and it only charges me like six bucks, bucks a month. Uh, but it's well, worth you, trying you out. You can get that for free uh, off of people from Twitter. <laughs> exactly. Perfect. On, honest, honest to God, like my, my copy editors, like that. My second round of copy editing was always Twitter because I'd post a link, and then like I know that if if it was if it was more than 500 words long, the first eight responses would be typos and like sentences that didn't end properly or something like that. And I was very very grateful to that. Uh, if you don't if you don't want to buy the paid plan, you can get a, the free version of it is a lot simpler. It just a lot of the higher level sort of grammar checking doesn't kick in yet, but it's still quite useful. And if you but it, it it worked for me because I tried the free free version for a little while and found it helpful. I really, really deeply, deeply, deeply read the privacy uh, part of the website to say, no, under no circumstances is it going to like look at 
private message, private emails I'm sending to someone and find a way to exploit that to sell me snow tires or something like that. Uh, so it's pretty explicit. So I'm, I'm confident with it so far. So that's my pick of the week, Grammarly. Uh, so that's going to be it for this week. Uh, all, all that's left is to thank my three wonderful developers who came and uh, helped us talk about and unpack uh, WWDC. Uh, Kelly Gaimont of App Camp for Girls. Uh, thank you. And for, of course, from MacObserver.com. Uh, actually, you, you were sort of, if, uh, I was hoping we could play like mixed doubles where if we get like two journalists and two developers, we could like play <laughs> tennis. You're, you're sort of straddling both. You could have been like the, 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 the invisible invisible player on third or something. I don't know how that would work. Uh, but <laughs> Kelly, how do people, how do people uh, get to see uh, some of the wonderful stuff that you do? Uh, well, you can check out the website for App Camp for Girls, which is appcamp number four girls dot com. And uh, if you're in the WWDC area and happen to have time to listen to us today, uh, there is a fundraising party going on tomorrow evening that Yay. you should totally go to because it's going to be a yes. lot of fun. And um, you can find me on Twitter as Verso and you can find me occasionally over at MacObserver.com where I'm generally complaining about iTunes. <laughs> so you're the one. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's just me. <laughs> Janie Clayton, so th thank you so much for coming on. You're the, the first time guest on uh, on Mac Break, and we're <laughs> so glad. I was so glad you were able to come in. Uh, I'm sure you want to plug uh, your new book, the, the Metal Programming Guide, and what el whatever else you want people to know about. Um, yep. Yeah, so uh, the Metal Programming Guide is avail pre available for pre-order on Amazon. I want to make sure everybody knows that it will be up to date with Metal 2 and all of the new shiny, awesome stuff that has come out um, this WWDC. So it's not going to be like a, an iteration behind. It will be in Swift. Um, I have my Twitter handle is Red Queen Coder. My blog is redqueencoder.com. Um, come say hi, post pug pictures. Um, follow me if you want to see lots of pictures of cooking. <laughs> 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 Oliver yeah. Breidenbeck of Bo Boink Software, thank you so much for coming in. You're you're a late arrival, uh, but I'm glad you were able to make it. Rather uh, late, a late invite. I don't mean that you. Were, I don't mean we were waiting on you. I meant that you, I was late to invite you. Well, I'm glad th you were available. Th thank you. Uh, thankfully for the uh, time zone difference, uh, it wasn't so short notice for me. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, is anybody? Where where do people go to see more of the stuff that you're doing today? Uh, so uh, our company website, boinks.com, B-O-I-N-X.com, has all the information about our great products, and I think that is enough plug for today. And uh, again, I'm, I'm so grateful to you that I, I did write down a note of something interesting that you said when we were talking about the iMac Pro. I couldn't help but mention, but notice that when uh, we asked are people going to be buying one, you said that you might be buying one more, not one, but one more iMac Pro, suggesting perhaps that you already had one for testing but couldn't tell anybody about it. I'm leaving it right there, again, because I'm so grateful <laughs> for you showing up. I don't want to get you in any, any trouble uh, as a journalist. I listen, but I don't necessarily necessarily have to disseminate. That's it for this week. Thanks to everybody for listening. Uh, you can all go back to work right now because break time is over. Come on, you gold bricks. Those packages aren't going to sort themselves. An empty truck is an idle truck. That was <laughs> specific for UPS and delivery drivers, but oh, the rest of you can hear it. Thank you very much. <laughs>